Hey guys, what a great morning it is uh, to be able to worship God with every one of you today. Before we hear our message, let's take this moment to put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, to set aside everything that we are to do today, and just take this moment to be 100% focused on the Lord as we abide in Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth this morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail. forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see oh Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Ten thousand beside, oh, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, Oh, uh... 
Great is thy faithfulness, great is your faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Praise God. Lord, thank you for your presence this morning. We lift up to you this day and say, we want to abide in you throughout the day. Lord, speak to us in a timely manner. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. This morning, uh, I believe, is another opportunity to abide in God's word. We're going to read Psalm 28, a Psalm of David, and see what message God has for us today. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil who speak peace with their neighbors while evil is in their hearts. Give to them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the works of His hands. He will tear them down and build them up. No more. Verse 6. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. This is a Psalm of David. And obviously in this Psalm, in this particular Psalm, David was in trouble and he was describing uh, his trouble to be coming from what he calls to be evil men. So there's a situation, but I am so amazed at his response. His response is worship. Now, as Christians, worship or worshiping is part of our new life in Christ. We are now to worship God. It is something that we make time for, wake up in the morning to do, and basically, supposedly, what motivates everything that we do in life this time. It is what we are doing right now through this morning worship and prayer. And thank you for taking the time to be with us. Hopefully, you're not just watching us, but instead, you are worshiping with us this morning. But I have a question for you. Have you ever felt like you don't have what it takes to worship? You know, maybe sometimes you're not feeling blessed uh, and it's harder to worship. Or maybe your breakthrough miracle has been delayed in coming, or maybe worries or fears and anxieties have been keeping you from praising God. I, I just wanted you to know that if there are times that you feel that, you are not definitely alone. But I hope and I pray that our time today, as we look at Psalm 28, what David did would be helpful to us all. In Psalm 28, we see the anatomy of David's worship. He said in verse 6, Blessed be the Lord. 
you know, this is actually the transition from um, what is very gloomy and uh, he was complaining about certain things. And then in verse 6, it was like a change in his tone. And he said it, he started with the words, Blessed be the Lord. He changed his tone by worship. He changed his tone by praising God. Now, if you look at the context behind this praise, this effort to praise the Lord, David's worship uh, is is coming from a context that is so interesting. You see, David was talking about his enemies in verse 3 and verse 5. He said, he mentioned them as the wicked, verse 3, the workers of evil, also in verse 3. And he said, they do not regard the works of the Lord. That, that one is in verse 5. And that was what has been uh, the the backdrop of his worship to God. And what's amazing was, instead of not worshiping, his response was to, to cry for help. Of course he would cry for help. He had enemies. He said in verse 1, To you, O Lord, I call. He also said in that verse, Be not deaf to me. And then in verse 2, he said, Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. But as he was acknowledging that he needed help and he was in trouble because of evil men. Verse 6, we would really see the shift and we would see the character of David that instead of not giving worship to the Lord or saying, I don't feel like worshiping God or I don't have the energy to worship the Lord today or the motivation to worship God today, the shift instead was to give God his blessing, his worship. He said, blessed be the Lord. Uh, he, and the reason for that is he recognized God's hand in his situation. He recognized three things. First one, he recognized God's mercy. He said in verse 6, He has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. And in, in verse 7, he said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. That's amazing to ponder. Not only that the Lord is his strength, he also is his shield. You know, I realize being strong is good, but if you don't have a shield, your strength will eventually give way. The shield prolongs the strength. And David said, that is my God. He is my strength and he is the one who prolongs my strength. That also comes from him. And thirdly, aside from God's mercy, God's strength, he said, God's protection is upon me. He said in verse 8, he is the saving refuge of his anointed. He was referring to himself. In other translation, anointed means the chosen king, which is himself. And he's saying, I am maybe the king, but my saving refuge, my protection is God. It's amazing how David, yes, he recognized his trouble, but he also recognized God's hand in the midst of his troubles. And the result was, was these three amazing things in verse 7. Just in verse 7, you would see the result. First is trust. He said, in him, my heart trusts, and I am helped. Secondly, that trust led to joy. He said, my heart exalts in the same verse. When you say exalts, that means my heart is full of joy. And so he's full of joy. He's able to trust God. And not only that, he said, and with my song, napakanta pa, and with my song, I give thanks to him. Has that ever happened to you? When you realize God's mercy, God's strength, and God's protection, when you realize how much you've been blessed, despite all your troubles, you see God's hand in your situation. You can't help but to have that joy in you. You can't help but to be able to just really trust God all the more. And more importantly, you can't help but to give thanks. In David's case, 
he burst into a song. Napakanta pa po si David. Napakanta ng kanyang pasasalamat sa Panginoon. Now, isn't that an amazing motivation? And isn't that an amazing fuel? An amazing in Tagalog hugot for our worship. My prayer and my hope for all of us today is whatever you're going through today, not just today, maybe in the past few days, past few weeks, past few months, or maybe it's been years now. Whatever you're going through, my prayer is that in the midst of all your troubles, troubles are easy to perceive, troubles are easy to recognize, but I hope that along with that, we will also recognize God's mercy, God's provision of strength, and God's protection for you and me. It's there. The reason why we're still here today is because of God's mercy, God's strength, and God's protection. That's exactly what David recognized in his life in the midst of all his troubles and suffering from wicked men. He was able to recognize God's hand. And I pray the same thing for you. And I hope that as you recognize that, it will result in worship. A worship that is not, you know, not forced. A worship that you don't have to drag yourself to do. But a worship that is fueled by trust, joy, and thanksgiving. In fact, why don't we do that right now? with the, our recollection of God's mercy and God's strength and God's protection, why don't we, in trust, joy, and thanksgiving, worship God once again? Pardon for sin the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessing Ten thousand beside Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning New mercies I see Praise God. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, the fact that we're still alive, the fact that we're still here enjoying your presence, the, the grace that you have every morning. Thank you. 
thank you for your mercy. We don't deserve any of this. Lord, thank you for your strength. And thank you for your protection in our lives, in our family. Even now, I claim it and declare it for everyone who's worshiping with us. I declare protection upon your family. I declare God's, God's strength to be upon you today. And Lord, with joy and thanksgiving and trust, we worship you. We thank you for this morning, an opportunity to abide in you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll see you again next time.